Hey guys, Dr. Paul here. Temporary crowns, they can be the bane of our existence and something that we don't look forward to at the end of a crown preparation appointment. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there, if you picture this with me, you've just finished your crown preparation, you're running just behind time. Anyway, you come to make your temporary crown, you come to remove it, it's stuck to the tooth, try and get it off, it ended up breaking, you have to do another one, come to cement it, it doesn't fit properly, it's high in the occlusion, there's gaps, it's all a headache, all to find that a week later the temporary crown ended up coming off, which cost you more time and money. So if you can relate to this, or you just want better fitting temporary crowns watch this video there's a few things that I've learned and I've developed myself to actually get better fitting really great temporary crowns that are faster easier happy days you're gonna enjoy it so for this video I'm going to show you how to do it out of the mouth then I'm going to show you on an actual patient the first thing that we need to do is to take an actual index of this now what I do that with is with a putty the reason that I use a putty is that it becomes really really firm and the more firm the material is that you take the index with the better fitting the crowns going to be I also use a metal tray to hold the putty in place, which is the same reason. More firmness and more rigidity means it's gonna be more accurate. So now we're gonna make our putty index. Now this is a stage that we normally do while the patient is going numb. So as I'm giving the local anesthetic, my assistant will start mixing this. So when I finish giving the local anesthetic, this will be ready to go into the mouth. Uh, now we use gloves for this because the putty that we use gets quite messy, otherwise it gets underneath your fingernails. Uh, you don't need a huge amount. You need enough obviously for the tooth that you're working on and then for a couple of teeth either side. Then you're going to put that in your tray. So it'll go in like this. Then it's gonna go over the top of the tooth. Now, you wanna make sure that it goes a few millimeters over the top either side. So on the buckle and on the palatal, it's gone over the top. And then we're gonna wait for that to set. Now you don't wanna rush this. If you do rush it and you take it out too quickly, it can mean that the putty will deform. If it deforms, it's not gonna be as accurate. You gotta spend more time afterwards. It defeats the purpose. So take your time. It'll mean that it's gonna be better fitting later, less time for you. Okay, so it's been about a minute now. Now I'll always test by putting some finger pressure on just to see how firm it is. Sometimes I'll put my nail in to see if it actually digs in or not. If it doesn't, it's ready to come off. So then we'll take it off. So this is how that's looking captures the detail really, really well. Now, the next thing that I do is I'll put some channels, one on the buckle, one on the palatal, and the channels serve two purposes. The first is that it means that the excess goes out of the channels rather than into the embrasures. If it goes into the embrasures, it can lock the temporary crown in place. So when you come to take the index off, it stays in place, then it's harder to get off. I also find that when you don't have the channels, the excess can go into the occlusion of the other teeth and you can't see it, and the patient's saying the bite doesn't feel right, and you say, oh, okay, I've got some temporary material on the other teeth. So that allows that excess to go out. The other thing that it does is if you put them on slight angles to one another, it's some extra retention, which means that when you take this off, it's more likely the temporary crowns are gonna come off at the same time. It'll make sense when I show you this next bit. Okay, so now you're at the point in the procedure where you finish your crown preparation, you've taken your impression, and you're about to now make your temporary crown. Now before I just fill this up and plonk it over the top, I wanna to check to make sure that I know exactly where it fits. So when I do do it, it's straight away. So I'll practice it a few times, just for myself to basically line up so I get a visual on where that spot needs to be. Now in the mouth, I don't actually dry the tooth first. Basically while I'm doing this, the patient would have closed their mouth and they've got saliva on the tooth. That saliva will help to make sure that my temporary crown doesn't stick to the tooth when I come to remove the index. In this case, I put Vaseline on here to do the same sort of thing. So the first thing is that I'm gonna bleed some out and I'll put that on the back of my glove and then put some in the tooth that you are working on. Now in the mouth, I'm gonna show you a slightly different variation just to help capture subgingival margins. Uh, but this one, I'm just putting it straight in here, nothing onto the tooth. And I always put more than I need to, I prefer to have excess. We're gonna line it up over the top, squish it into place. Now you should be able to see that we've got excess there on the buckle, excess there on the palatal. Now I'm just gonna keep some pressure on that and you hold it in place for about this is Lux attempt. I, I do it for about 35 seconds. Don't leave this too long onto the tooth. If you leave it for too long, when this sets, it actually shrinks and contracts slightly and it will stick and glue itself to the tooth. You don't want that. When you pull it off, you wanna make sure that the temporary crown comes off with the index. Because I've got some excess here, I can actually test to see when that's ready. So I've got my probe here. I can feel on the back of my glove, has it set yet? I can feel that it's getting close. And I feel here, I can see that it's almost set as well. All right, so this is how it looks. 
Now you'll see that the excess is still here on the buckle and the palatal. In the mouth, that won't happen. The excess will actually come away with the tray. I think it's just sticking to the acrylic here. You'll see how it works in the mouth. But the main thing is that this is still in place. Now, don't rush to get this out. Make sure that you wait long enough till it's actually finished. If you try and get it out early, you can end up deforming it. So definitely wait until it's set, which is about another minute or two. So do your notes, do something in the meantime. Once this is set, that's when you start working on this. Okay, so here's the crown inside here, and we're gonna get it out. Normally I use a flat plastic or something, but basically you just go in underneath the crown and then slowly pull it out. So you can see there is some excess, which we're gonna take away now with the burr, but this is how it's looking. It's looking pretty good. So you'll get your high speed and you'll go around and you'll remove those little bits. Make sure as well that you don't take too much here because if you do it here, you can affect the contact between this and the next door tooth. And if you basically remove that contact, this tooth can now move mesially and then your final crown won't fit. So do it basically down towards this, uh, the margin part, the apical portion of the crown. Okay, so now we'll try it on the model. That's fitting really nicely. Maybe a little bit over contoured here, so we'd adjust that. So after removing the excess, this is the point that we get to. So I'm quite happy with the look of that crown. If I wanted to make it even shiny, you'd then use some soft flex disc and some polishing burrs, but often for a posterior tooth, I don't really do that as long as my margins are nice and clean and they're fitting well around the tooth. So now it's time to cement it into place. Now, if you just got some of your temporary cement, put it into place and plonked it on the tooth, because of how thick this is, the pressure that builds up doesn't actually allow a lot of it to ooze out of the side. So you'll find that when you push it down, you can't actually push it down as far as you normally would be able to. So what that means is you get a gap at the margin and also it ends up being high in the occlusion. So I did a bit of research, couldn't really find anything and basically invented my own little way of doing it. I'm sure someone else has done it, but what I do now is I'll put a little vent hole in the occlusal. So this vent hole will allow the excess cement to come out. First thing, bleed some of the temporary cement, then place it inside here. You don't need a huge amount because we know that this is really well fitting. And then make sure it's around the right way and make sure that your finger's not covering that vent hole. So I normally push down from the cusps and then push like that and you'll see some of it's come out that end bit, some of it's around the margins, and then I hold it in place. So I'll hold it there for about 30 seconds or so till it starts to set. Once it sets, I then start removing some with my probe. You'll see all of this in the video. And then I come to the interproximals with some floss or if I can see that there's nothing there, then I don't worry, I just use my ultrasonic scaler. Now like this, same thing on the inside. Pretty hard on this mold in real life. Now the top bit, you can basically flick that off. So into proximally, you get your assistant to put their finger on top of the tooth, then you floss up and down like this, pull out to the side, same thing, assistant with their finger on top of the tooth. So with them holding just so it doesn't move, floss in between, up and down, and then slide out. And then I'll go around with my ultrasonic. Now with that top bit, you can leave it like that if you want to, and often the temporary cement will stay there, or you can use your ultrasonic to remove it and then fill it with flow. And that is how it looks. So after removing the excess, I'll then check the occlusion, make any adjustments that we need to, and then we're good to go. So now I'm gonna show you the exact same thing, but on a real life patient. So this is the tooth we're working on. It's the upper left canine. We're gonna be doing a crown for this tooth. So as I'm finishing my local anesthetic, my assistant starts mixing the putty. I load it into my tray, and then I put it over the top of the tooth, making sure it goes over at least one tooth either side. Then I feel to make sure that it's set and I take it out. And then it comes time to add the channels. So I do one on the buckle and one on the palatal, making sure it goes all the way to the apical portion. They don't have to be on different angles, but you can if you want to. It doesn't really make a huge difference in this case. Now my crown preparation is done. So it's time to make the temporary crown. So first thing is I'll practice seating the tray in. Then I'll bleed some on the back of my glove and load it into the tray. Now this next bit is if you have a subgingival margin, you can actually put the temporary material on that margin first, just to make sure that you capture that area really well and get no air bubbles. Pop it over the top, you can see the excess comes out, and then once it's set, you take it out. Now, before it's completely set, I will use a flat plastic to get rid of the channels, and then I'll wait another minute or so for it to set nice and hard, uh, and then at that point, I'll take it out with my flat plastic. At this point here, it's hard enough that you can now start removing the excess. So basically, I'm just removing 
the extra little bits that shouldn't be there just to get it all nice and smooth. Often you have to do a little bit around where those channels were and then along the margins. The better that you can get this fitting and the smoother it is, the more comfortable it will be for the patient, the less chance of any gaps, the healthier the gum's gonna be. It's just better all around. And then we try that in and I'm really, really happy with how this fits. And then I'll use my flat plastic on one of the sides to get that out. And then I'm gonna put my vent hole. So that goes through on the palatal. If it's a posterior tooth, you're gonna do it on the occlusal. And then I'm just clearing out the excess material here with the triple X. And then I'll dry the tooth before we actually come to cement it into place. And then I'm loading in my temporary cement and then position it over the top of the tooth. And in this case, I'm just pushing down on the actual cusp tip. And you can see there where the excess has come out on the palatal and we've got a lot of excess around the margin. So I'm really happy with the fit of this. So removing the excess is normally done with something sharp like an explorer or a scaler. And we'll normally have the high speed suction close by just to pick up any flex so they don't go down the patient's throat. Uh, you can also use your floss at this stage if you need to remove any interproximally. Uh, so just on the palatal, we'll now come to the big chunk of excess where that vent hole was, and we'll remove that first with the Explorer, and then we'll come to it with the ultrasonic. So you can leave it in place, or if you clear it out, it then leaves you some space to fill that area with some flowable composite, or you can use regular composite if you like. After you load that up, you cure it, and then you'll check the bite. Often you'll have to adjust a little bit where you added that flow and I'll do any further smoothing that I need to. And then at this point, I'll finish off with my ultrasonic around the margins just to make sure that they're all nice and clean and any flossing that I need to between the teeth too. Check the bite again and then we are good and we're done. So I hope you can get something out of that video. There's a few little tips that you'll be able to pick up to make your temporary crowns fit a lot better. Um, you'll find that less adjustments and less of them falling off and just overall you'll have a better time and so will your patients. So if you got something out of the video, please like, share, subscribe. Those things really help me out a lot. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. Have a great day and keep on smiling.